reminder will be going live. You should be getting the notification now. So I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, I will will be sharing some sensitive information. So just dropping in the chat some trigger warnings about because uh, we our presenter will be talking about suicide and other mental health issues. So if you feel triggered or want to know more or access resources, um, we will be sharing those out throughout the presentation. So uh, good afternoon. I am Clementine uh, Minnie Bordeaux with Racing Magpie. And on behalf of our whole team, I wanted to welcome everyone to um, our presentation today, a part of our seasonal program called Winter Camp. So we're joined with, by um, presenter Tosha Tuhart, who will be presenting uh, on suicide prevention through being a good relative. And we're very privileged to have her share with us today. Uh, if you don't know, Racing Magpie is an arts and cultural organization that was founded here in 2015 in Rapid City, Minneluzaha Otuwahe here in South Dakota, uh, which centers the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does, especially in arts and culture. Our work is focused on elevating and amplifying the ongoing work of community-based artists and culture bearers. And as part of being a good relative, this program will reimagine the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining the de deeper cultural roots and the way that Lakota people do things and how we interact with the world around us. Um, these events are open to the public, but our focus is always on indigenous communities, especially those of the Ocheti Shakoi Nation, as both presenters and audience members. We want to thank the Bush Foundation for their generous sponsorship of the program this year. And as always, if you would like to find ways to support Racing Magpie, you can always visit our website or stop by our new space and um, visit and you can drop off a donation or you can also always support our artists and creatives by searching them out, buying their art, downloading their music. Um, at, if you don't know our presenter today, Tosha Tuhart has her own fashion line. So you can purchase, if you wanna support her that way, you can buy one of, I'm wearing her one of her shirt designs now. Um, and supporting our artists that way. So throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat if you're in the Zoom room or if you're joining us on Facebook Live, I'll be monitoring the comments. Um, and we encourage you to, to be engaged in any way that you can. So you can, all, you can private message me or reach out to us through social media. So without further delay, I'm excited to introduce Tosha. She is the director of the community Behavioral Health at Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board. Um, the Community Behavioral Health Department hosts three community programs, connecting with our youth, Great Plains Tribal Opioid Response, and Great Plains Native Connection. Tosha has been with this program since 2019 and has 14 years of serving Native communities in various capacities. She received her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology at, from UCLA and her Master's of Business Administration from Bentley University. So today, Tosha will share about how programs address suicide prevention, share some recommendations on how we can all prevent suicide as being a good relative to ourselves and others. So I'll turn it over to you. I'm back to like, oh, am I am I on? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, awesome. You're good can, to you, go. can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. I'm back to watch day. Um, greetings to you all from the Shea Safa. Um, I'm Trosha to Heart, as uh, Clementine said. And today I'm gonna talk about suicide prevention through being a good relative. Um, I do work in community behavioral health at Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board. So before I get into the presentation, I do want to warn that, uh, talk about self-care, the content of this session uh, may be triggering for folks. Um, so before I get started, I encourage folks to either screenshot or uh, the information on this slide or um, 
find the information, um, these resources in the chat box, uh, if you're on Zoom or in the comments for Facebook Live. Um, resources available are the National Suicide Lifeline, um, Crisis Text Line, which has crisis um, counselors available 24 seven. You can text Hukvaki or text native to 741-741. And then we have our Connecting with Our Youth app, which is available um, in the Apple Store or Android, um, the Google Play Store. And then um, if you have questions or concerns or need someone to talk to, um, you can find an individual who's local here in Rapid City who uh, you could talk to directly or um, you can message me on the app. Um, more uh, self-care tips is, um, you know, I, I commend you for being um, courageous and wanting to learn more about this topic. It is a heavy topic. So I encourage you to have some water next to you and drink, drink some water, eat something, grab a coloring book or a sheet of paper and a pencil. If you have beadwork or something that you can um, work with your hands, um, or even just write, you know, what are you feeling? Um, what do you, uh, what, what is going on when you're hearing these things or um, listening? And feel free to ask your questions um, in the comments or in the chat box or just articulate what you're feeling in the moment um, if you feel comfortable. Um, one thing I also encourage is, you know, like wrap yourself in a blanket or move to a comfortable place put yourself in a, um, in a place where you feel comfortable um, and that'll, um, that'll also help you, um, uh, I guess that would help prevent um, triggering during this, um, this webinar. So today we'll talk about uh, the Community Behavioral Health Suicide Prevention Programs we have at Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board and then talk about some tips and recommendations on what you can do to prevent suicide through being a good relative. And then um, we will go through a short, I will walk you through how to um, make a safety plan. And then we'll have time for Q&A. So uh, Great Plains Community of Behavioral Health is located uh, here in Rapid City. We have three programs, Great Plains Native Connections, Connecting with Our Youth or COI, and Great Plains Tribal Opioid Response, also called Great Plains Tour. Um, these programs are funded by four SAMHSA grants and two supplemental SAMHSA grants, and SAMHSA stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. So uh, the, this is our team. Um, so the Community Behavioral Health um, Department is both in Rapid City and in Fort Thompson, South Dakota. Um, these are all our amazing um, team members who work in our department. We are a public health, um, a public health uh, department. So a lot of what we do is outside of the clinical realm. We are we do community work, we do community activities, community education, um, mentorship, and um, resource navigation for the communities that we work with and. The communities that we um, currently focus on uh, are Rabbit City and then also the Crow Creek Sioux Tribe. We have one project that serves um, several other tribes, uh, our Great Plains Tribal Big Response, um, which serves uh, a tribe in North Dakota, um, some South Dakota tribes, and then a tribe in Nebraska. So I do want to, I wanted to talk about the two suicide prevention programs that we have at uh, Great Plains. The first one we have is um, Great Plains Native Connections. So uh, that's funded through a tribal behavioral health grant um, called Native Connections. There's Native Connections grants in um, uh, many tribal communities out there. And so it's youth focused. We serve the Crow Creek Reservation. Um, we're in our second um, grant. So it's a five-year grant. We first got a grant in 2016, and now um, we are in our second award. And so the purpose of this um, project is to reduce suicide behavior and substance use on the Crow Creek Reservation. 
We want to increase um, the utilization of behavioral health services and resources. We want to increase education on substance use and um, mental health so that we can reduce stigmatization. And then we want to promote a culture of trauma healing and behavioral health wellness for the community. So some of the things that the project's done since um, I've been a part of um, Native Great Plains Native Connections is uh, we've we went to develop uh, we developed a resource guide of all the different um, resources and programs on the reservation and distributed that out to the community. We set up the Hunkbati Crisis Text Line. Uh, which is uh, part of the National Crisis Text Line, um, but we were able to get a keyword that was um, important to the Crow Creek Reservation, um, Hunkbati, which is their, um, their tribal name that they call themselves. We brought in um, two artists, um, uh, two artists who are role models in terms of um, both uh, practicing sobriety and uh, their own work in trauma healing. Um, it was actually Jeremy Fields and um, uh, Collins, uh, Provost Fields. They came into the community and did a trauma workshop, a trauma healing workshop with 24 youth. And then they co-created a, a mural that represented like wellness and um, prevent suicide prevention. And so, um, this mural is um, in the middle of Fort Thompson. So that was painted by the youth and um, designed by them. So, um, and then we also do a lot of community events. Um, we did a virtual music camp with Talon Deschino. Um, and then we did a suicide crisis intervention team training in the community. We also created a social media kit in Lakota and Dakota, which is available on our website that addresses um, and encourages our relatives to get help when they're going through a, um, a behavioral health and mental health crisis. Um, right now, we currently are implementing a youth navigator program where we have a staff member work one-on-one -on -one with youth ages um, 10 up to 24 on their life planning, um, coping skill building, um, helping them apply for college or apply for jobs. Um, we help with transportation for behavioral health. And we're doing a lot of community education. And then um, a big piece of our new grant is sustainability planning um, uh, within the community that will be led by youth. So our other programs, connecting with our youth, um, that is also a SAMHSA funded um, suicide prevention grant. This program um, has both prevention, intervention and postvention activities. So prevention, or we'll talk about prevention, but um, there's a spectrum of how to respond to um, suicide from way early, um, activities before someone even like before suicide's even an issue to um you know what happens after it is a completion so um <clears throat> connecting with their youth has um uh, four components to it um uh, which are our connecting with their youth mobile app our support navigator program our native community response team and then our community education so some of the things um, that the so COI started in 2019, um, we do a lot of activities with the youth. Um, some of the things that the program created, especially during the pandemic, was a wellness guide with coping um, skills and strategies. Um, our team goes into Monument Health um, and also the Arise Youth Center to do support groups with the youth. Um, our support navigator program is actually the biggest component about our program, and I'll talk a little bit about it. But we have um, cultural services for our youth, we have community training, and then um, we manage our mobile app, which has about 50 users. And so I'll talk about that too. So our support navigator program is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship, advocacy, uh, resource navigation program for youth in the Rapid City area ages 10 to 24. 
Um, so we have about four navigators and one lead navigator. And so each navigator works with the youth um, who is um, who does meet our criteria for being at risk for suicide, which includes um, ongoing suicidal behavior, self-harming behavior, substance use, um, isolation, and then experience with trauma. So once a youth is um, enrolled in our program, they have a support navigator working on them on a healing plan. A support navigator will support the youth in whatever it is that they're needing. Um, we offer cultural services such as um, inipi and um, ceremonial services. Our culture nights teach cultural activities and lessons. Um, recently, uh, the youth have been going through Trashasha um, learning lessons and we have a cultural calendar. So in March, the youth in our program will be going up to um, Black Elk Peak. Um, in line with um, the, the spiritual cultural calendar. Um, let's see. Oh, and then our uh, Connecting with Our Youth program um, also um, does outreach um, in partnership with the Rapid City Police Department. So uh, we have a deep relationship with them and follow up with youth who um, uh, who uh, could possibly benefit from the program. So our program does a lot of outreach and we try to make sure that folks know that we're here for the youth, it's free. Um, and so uh, <clears throat> um, it's one way that we um, serve our youth. And so the youth um, either be in prevention or they may have like come out of the um, hospital so we try to have that cultural mentor um, there for them. So we're connecting with our youth app just launched in um, December. Um, so it's a mobile app that aims to support youth who may need someone to talk to, um, or maybe they're mostly someone to talk to to need emotional support. And so it's to build that, um, those resources, um, virtually. So we have people who are called Opijupi uh, connectors who are available to talk to anyone who, um, anybody on the app who needs someone to talk to. Our um, connectors are um, uh, FBI background checked. Um, they're trained in um, crisis intervention and listening, and um, they are people who want to be there and available to help others. So um, there is a way to apply to become a uh, Okijupi or uh, which you can uh, reach out to me. Um, there is a way to request also within the app, but anybody is free to download the app and um, create an account. So now I wanna talk about suicide prevention um, in itself. So suicide prevention are any, is any activity before an attempt um, happens? So this could be way before um, activities can include things that you do or implement or are happening that even prevent someone from even thinking about suicide. And it goes all the way up to um, when someone is in that ideal, ideation phase or is um, starting to plan. But the the real goal or the underlying goal of prevention is to reduce factors that increase risk and increase factors that promote resilience. So we call them protective factors. Um, so what are protective factors? Well, they're, the list can go on and I really encourage folks to type in the chat um, or to comments on what, what you think are protective factors, but you know, your cultural practices, um, your song, your dance, food, shelter, feeling safe in your environment, healthy relationships, um, hobbies, um, building your skills, uh, whatever it is that like self-improvement, um, healthy lifestyles, eating, um, eating good food, having good friends, bonding, having trusting relationships, sobriety, um, exercise, um, just being able to um, talk to someone, traveling, walking, 
laughing, which is my favorite, um, having life goals, um, going to movies, friendships, um, feeling like you're supported, being in a stable environment. Those are all um, activities that prevent suicide. Um, and so our ancestors knew how to, oh yes, creating art. <laughs> our ancestors knew how to be there for each other and they knew how to cultivate a healthy way of existence. Nakre nula wa'u, always being prepared. Um, I was taught, you know, that a woman holds a shawl and then she has her belt with um, um, her needle, her knife, and even like a little um, pouch to hold um, food. Um, wasna. The point is that you're ready and you're there to nurture. That shawl or that blanket is to be wrapped around someone or a child who's hurting. Um, you're always ready to cut something or fix something or just be there. Um, so when we start practicing um, that type of way where you're there for others and you're um, ready to help others and you have those healthy tools that you can use, um, you are essentially preventing suicide. So some, uh, some sample questions. So say um, you have a relative or there's a person in your life who may be going through a hard time and you wanna help them. Um, some questions you can ask um, that person when they're going through a hard time or maybe you're just worried about them or maybe you're trying to develop a relationship with someone because you care about them. These are these questions in the blocker, some questions that uh, you could possibly use or a variation of them. Um, what can I do to, to help you? Um, you could even ask, can I help you? Um, when someone is going through a hard time or when um, their mental health is in, um, in need of help, it's still their mental health. It's still their, um, their body and their mind. And so, we always need to remember that people have sovereignty over their bodies and their spirit and um, their emotions and their minds. So um, forcing people to do something is never good. <laughs> so ask them if you can help them. Ask, what can I do to help you? If someone's having a hard time talking, um, you know, give them, um, ask what did you do you know ask uh, give them something to eat give them something um give them something to drink if they like to color give them like color pencils and then you know get them in a comfortable place and then ask them these questions what did you do today how did those things make you feel what are you feeling right now what do you need from me right now just ask them, don't, don't assume um, what they need. Don't, don't like get upset or <clears throat> um, try to assume anything. It's really up to them and they can tell you what they need. If someone's like um, these other questions, like especially if someone is in a bad place and they're having a really hard time and being emotional, you know, ask them, where does it hurt? Ask them, like, what do you usually do when you feel like this, what helps you? Because um, they know like they can problem solve or think a little bit about, okay, well, you know, I need, um, you know, I always feel better if I watch TV or I, I get a movie or I, I, I want some hot chocolate or ice cream or I need to take a drive. <clears throat> and then maybe that's something you can do. Maybe you can do that for them to take them out of that um, headspace. You know, is there someone I can contact for you? Um, a lot of times it, it can be hard for folks to get help from people they may not be close to, but you know, if there's someone that they know um, that they need or they wanna see or be with, maybe you can help get them connected to that person. Or maybe they, um, there's some place that they need to go. Sometimes it's okay to know that you're not that person but staying with someone and helping them get to um, where they can feel comfortable and safe um, is important. 
So then we get into the hard part. Um, so some, you know, you do have someone who's suffering and it's actually um, evidence tells us that um, if you talk about suicide, it does not increase um, suicidal thoughts or ideations um, in anyone. Because if someone is contemplating suicide, it's already there. But getting them to talk about it um, can be helpful. So one of the hard questions that um, we ask in our program, we, this is actually called the ASQ um, suicide screening and it's the most simple suicide screening that you could use. And um, it's pretty um, easy to um, remember. So you're not like having a paper or anything, it's easy questions. So asking someone, you know, are you thinking about killing yourself? Um, they might say yes, or you might say no. Uh, if they say yes, you, you do want to follow up and ask, do you have a plan? Now, if they say yes, you want to help them safely. You want to get them to an emergency department or um, some type of crisis service. So call 911. Um, do not leave this person alone. Um, and just be like, you know, after you call 911 or you get some type of professional help set up for them, stay with them and be present with them until you can get professional help. Um, those situations can be uncomfortable, but to be calm and just be with them, sit with them, um, pray, um, you can smudge, you can give them water, you can just, be there in that hard time until they get help is so important. Um, and then it's important to reiterate to the person or even yourself that there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with them. And there is nothing wrong with getting help. When somebody is in a suicide crisis, it's, um, it's we, I try to um, compare it to having a heart attack or um, being in, like having a medical crisis. Um, sometimes folks need that professional help. They need, um, they need more than what you can try to bandage at home, right? If you like cut yourself deep or you're having a heart attack or it's okay to get medical help for things that are beyond your ability to handle. So um, let's see. So then we talk about how can you be a good relative to yourself. And one thing you will want to do when you're in this work or when you are, um, you know, you, you are helping somebody who is um, having those ideations or attempts is be good to yourself. It's good to have self-care. Be good to yourself. At the beginning of this presentation, we talked about self-care, coloring, um, wrapping yourself in a blanket, um, getting fresh air, drawing, um, laughing. You have to practice that for yourself to be resilient for others. So it's important that um, you, you, whatever healthy coping mechanisms that you have for yourself, pass them on to others, teach others how to do or how to um, build those skills. So um, how to be a good relative to yourself, you know, create a safety plan and use it. Um, so a safety plan, which we'll get into, is a sheet of paper. Um, or it could be in an app, too. There's safety plan apps out there. But it's a plan for you to use when um, there is a crisis. Um, there's uh, companies have things like that. Organizations, they have um, risk mitigation plans or or uh, crisis plans, this one is your own personal um, crisis plan. When we're like really emotional and in a crisis, you, a lot of times it's hard to think rationally. So the piece of paper that you keep with you thinks for you. <clears throat> also, it's important to get familiar with your local and tribal suicide prevention programs. Uh, there are local um, prevention programs seemingly on every reservation. And then there's a behavioral health department on every reservation. And then of course, here in Rapid City, 
we have Oyate Behavioral Health. Um, we have our uh, our behavioral health programs too as well um, under Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board. And then there's Monument Health. And then there's also the Crisis Center um, uh, in downtown Rapid City. Um, find supportive individuals in your community. Um, there are folks who out there who um, who may have like gone through these things, or they are passionate about this work, or they want to um, they want to help. Um, find those healthy individuals in your community that you can connect with, or find them online. There are tons of um, communities out there around um, different topics, whether it's like from recovery to um, um, surviving um, trauma. Um, or even just suicide, um, suicide survivor, uh, being a suicide survivor. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there. It's just taking the time to connect with them. And then uh, as always, connecting with the Connecting with Our Youth app that I introduced is another um, resource. So the point is to build your safety net or help your relative build a safety net. The more trusting individuals you have in your life um, that you can go to, um, the, the better it is for that individual because they won't feel alone. They know who they can trust. Um, and then if you don't feel safe, go to the nearest ER. Um, so this slide, um, it's interesting because this talks to both, it speaks both to folks who, um, want to help prevent suicide, but also to those who um, uh, may have suicidality or thoughts within themselves. And when you are dealing with suicide, um, you can get vicarious trauma. And so that is when, um, when you hold emotional space or labor for others, um, you take that on as your own. And so that, um, it's like you're taking their emotional pain and making it your own. And then you yourself can um, also go down into a dark place. So that's why it's important to practice self-care and to set boundaries, mental boundaries and healthy boundaries and um, utilize your own safety nets. So, um, and also when I talk about if you do not feel safe, um, what I'm talking about is knowing yourself and knowing your environment. Um, if you feel that there are unsafe people in your environment or there are things that could increase the likelihood of, um, of suicide or you feel out of control of your body, um, go to the ER. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with you or the person. Um, they just need a professional help and stabilization is needed. <clears throat> so now I want to walk through um, what a safety plan is. And for if, um, if you feel comfortable, I'd like to ask you to grab a sheet of paper and a pen. And so um, when you grab that sheet of paper, um, you can either um, fold it up into six sections or you can um, scratch or line it to six session, sections or number it to six sections. But you're gonna need um, six sections um, on the piece of paper. And so within each, each section, um, you wanna write answers to these questions. So for section one, what are warning signs that I am going into crisis? So when you think about like warning signs, you're checking in with yourself. Think about a time that you're emotionally, you were just like high emotions or you felt like you were going out of control. What were you doing? Like what were the warning signs before it happened? Um, were you lashing out at people? Were you, um, did you have insomnia? Um, did you shut down? Did you like um, isolate yourself from others? Only you know those signs. So reflecting and listing down like, well, I know when I'm not um, eating well or I stop eating, um, that's a warning sign. Or um, I start getting really irritable, that's a warning sign. 
um, um, increase for some folks, this might mean increased substance use. That's a warning sign. So you want to think about, you know, what are my warning signs and list them. And then for section two, you want to think about what can you do to distract yourself without um, contacting others. So say you're, you know, you're in a bad emotional place and um, you're not feeling well, you're you know, you feel yourself going into crisis. Um, what are things that you can do in that moment that'll take you out of that situation? Is it um, going to watch a movie? Is it um, running um, three miles straight? Is it um, listening to music? Is it writing poetry? Is it reading? Is it it could be anything as long it's just think about what you enjoy what makes you feel good um, <clears throat> and then section three who or where can you go to distract yourself with some people who you can go visit or places that you really like to go to you know maybe um maybe you want to go to the park maybe you want to um, find your friend um or your buddy and go walk walk around the lake or go hiking or maybe um, grandma's house is where I feel the most safe so I'm gonna go to grandma's house or or I'm gonna go visit cousin my cousin because I always feel good being around that person or um, whatever it is that's personal to you and then for section four who are people that you can talk to um you want to list their names and phone numbers. Who do you trust? Um, you want to be able to have that information ready. And you want to think about who can I go to in this moment. Um, again, when like when you're in crisis, you don't think about. You're just like you can be in a situation where you're just kind of blinded by um, your emotions. This paper will tell you what to do. And of course, where can I get professional support? Um, I mentioned a few resources. Every tribe has resources um, on their reservations. And then here in Rapid City, we have a lot of resources. And if you are wondering who can you go to or um, not, or kind of right now, I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what the resources are in my community. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my contact info will be at the end of this presentation soon. And I can probably help you um, find those resources depending on where you're at. Um, what are steps I can take to keep myself safe? Right ways to safeguard your whole, your environment and your body. Are there things that um, you can hurt yourself with that are in the house that should be locked up or removed? Are there substances that, um, that need to be removed or um, uh, thrown, disposed of properly? <clears throat> you know you. Um, one thing I will say is that um, one thing uh, is that it's been um, shown that a big risk factor for um, suicide completion um, is related to substance use and alcohol use. Um, so being able to remove those substances, especially when someone's going through crisis, um, can help. Um, and let's. See. Oh, and then so this little graphic here in the corner is like a really short version of a safety plan. Um, it's like, uh, you can make a safety plan however you like. Maybe you can add more questions to it. Um, you can change the questions around. You could make it your own. But the point is, is that you read the safety plan and you keep it with you um, for that rainy day. And now that you've learned what a safety plan is and how to make one, teach somebody else how to make it. Teach someone else, maybe someone in your life to make a safety plan and um, make a copy of it or keep it for yourself so that maybe you can help that person when they are in crisis. Um, it's, kind of, um, it's kind of cool because then you have like a map on, okay, this is what I can do for my friend when they are, they are needing help, or this is what I can do for my child or for my relative. So that basically is my presentation. Um, 
I didn't want to go too um, deep into, um, I, I could go, when you talk about suicide prevention, there's so many things I could talk about, but I wanted to keep it simple and kind of um, in a way that folks could understand. But uh, we do have a lot of resources on our website, bhr.gptchb.org. Um, we have uh, resources. You can learn more about connecting with our youth. Um, we have what free webinars on substance use um, and cultural practices that um, go with um, uh, with um, substance use prevention and recovery. Um, we have a comic book, which is in Lakota and Dakota. And um, yeah, we have a lot more information there. Um, if you have questions or um, comments, you can contact me on my email, which is on the slide. And um, yeah, you can also message me. Um, you can message me on the Connecting Through Youth app. But again, um, <clears throat> My message um, for this webinar is you are, you are important, um, our relatives are important, we have to take care of each other, um, you are worth living a good life, um, you are worth taking out toxicity or things that don't make you feel good um, out of your life, you are worth safety and you are worth love. And you can save a life by asking for help. You can save your life by asking for help and your life is worth saving. So I will open it up for questions or comments. Thank you, Tosha. That was really helpful. Um, the, and I just, I appreciate you sharing resources and, and kind of walking us through creating a plan. Um, are there any questions from our Zoom room? Uh, there are folks, uh, we have a comment from Nancy who says, Palam Yaye, I so appreciate your presentation. Thank you, Nancy. So if anyone has a question for Tosha, they could share in the chat or comment on our Facebook Live. I guess I'll pose a question to folks out there. How did this presentation make you feel? How are you, I wanna check in with folks out there. How are you feeling? Well, I, I'll respond. I think uh, going through the, the questions, like what are warning signs? I am in crisis, I think, that is such a big step in recognizing uh, when I have depressive thoughts or I'm something is triggering me negatively. Um, being able to recognize those things is really important. And so I think having that list of like, what are things I can do to help myself, right? And what are the ways to recognize when I am maybe spiraling towards depression or, or, um, negative, like mental health. So it was, it was good to have that moment to reflect. Yeah. Um, emotion, uh, one of the big parts of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So the more self-aware we are of our own behaviors and our own feelings, checking in with ourselves, we're more able to, um, extend those skills to others. Um, I once took a test, not a test, but a, a study where um, I learned that I wasn't like in sync or like ask, like really knowing how other people felt about things. So I did an experiment um, with this study of making sure to ask people who I interacted with how they felt about whatever it was going on in their life and their everyday life. So, you know, I had a friend and she would tell me something like, so how does that make you feel? 
she kind of laughed she's like oh are you a therapist and I said no I'm just you know I'm really interested in learning how you how you're feeling today and so I made it a point to ask this this well several people around the same time you know oh and how you know how are you feeling about that or um how are you feeling today or how does that make you feel depending on whatever they're talking about after a while they naturally just started sharing how they felt about everything it wasn't even that I had to ask that they were, they felt comfortable enough to talk about what they're feeling because they associated interacting with me as a, as a space to share feelings. So I thought that was really cool. But, but yes, it's also important to check in with yourself. How am I feeling? You know, this happened today. How do I feel about what happened today? Uh, Nancy commented further, um, they feel relieved hearing you say talking about suicide and asking a person in crisis about their thoughts is important. Thank you, Nancy. Yes, it's, um, it is, it is okay. Um, and it is scary. So again, like, I thank you all for coming and listening to this because, um, talking about suicide or thinking about it can be a really scary topic but we also have to normalize talking about mental health and um and these things so that we can better help each other and help our relatives and our youth what are some tosha what are some since we are <laughs> racy magpie and we're arts and culture based uh organization what are some art practices that you have done that have helped you? Yeah, so when I was a teen, I, um, I drew a lot. So I really like, I mean, I was really into drawing. Now I'm into um, computer graphics, but when I would draw, I would just get lost into what I was drawing. Like hours would go by. I was just totally in the moment of drawing. Um, if you have a medium, like an art medium that just gets you lost in what you're doing and you don't think about anything else, that's, you know, that's the perfect um, coping skill you can have. Hello? Yeah. Jake, I think I got some of your question. Um, you had a lot of feedback. Are you able to um, I type your, your question in a chat box? Um, but what I'm hearing is you're asking about um, how much of suicide ideation is related to undiagnosed um, uh, mental health um, issues. And then I think you mentioned something about hospitalization, but if you can type in a chat box, um, that I, I might be able to better answer your question, but. I apologize, I'm driving down the interstate right now. Oh, okay. I'm taking a down the road. But that's one of my questions. Okay. Um, so, Suicide ideation, um, I didn't think I'd get this deep into it, but 
It's a really good question. You know, how much of suicide ideation is related to an undiagnosed mental illness? Um, believe it or not, it's actually normal to think about like for a human being, whether they are like a healthy human being to think about suicide at some point. It's actually, it's just, you know, it's like a thought that some folks might think about. Um, serious suicide ideation where it's consuming a person or um, they're acting on it. Um, that could be due to, um, you know, mental illness. It could be due to just, it's like, what? well, what is the root cause, right? Um, we talk about healing from trauma and we always talk about trauma being the root cause. Sometimes mental illness is, but, you know, biologically based, but it's hard to say that without really digging deep into what are the causes. Um, folks tend to think about suicide when they are in a really hard place or they feel like they're in a situation that they cannot get out of. They don't see, at least within them and in that moment, they don't see any other solutions. And so they also are in. Um, I've actually read that um, suicide ideation is also, also comes from um, extreme psychological pain that uh, one wants to end. And psychological pain um, actually activates the same parts of your brain as physical pain. So um, in a sense, when, fo when folks are deeply considering um, suicide, it's to end um, um, end that ongoing pain and get some type of relief, which um, is not, you know, it's it's not a good thing or that's not really, you know, a per they call it a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Um, so those are my thoughts on it. Every individual is different. Um, we also have, um, <clears throat> when we um, think about youth, um, youth, so the brain doesn't stop developing or maturing until folks are like mid to late um, 20s, even 30. So youth are smart. <laughs> Our youth are intelligent and they, um, you know, they are as brilliant as they'll ever be when they're like around age 18, but the emotional maturity, that critical, let me stop and think about what I'm doing, that doesn't completely develop until you know like your late 20s or your brain's still developing so um there's a there's a type of impulsiveness that um our younger relatives um can go through or um experience sometimes um doing before thinking and um being emotional you know um <clears throat> and so i think about you know sometimes People, uh, folks will make a decision that they didn't really think through and it has like some long-term consequences. And then um, substances increase that, um, can um, increase impulsivity, especially in folks who already have those tendencies. Um, you, you asked something about hospital. Um, could you try asking that again, Jake? Yeah, sure. Now that uh, I'm actually concerned I'm not shopping down there every day. <laughs> but uh, one of the questions was, um, man, I asked like three different questions. Um, how long does suicidal isolation uh, last or go so, based on a case by case uh, situation uh, with the individual? And what's the recovery um, rate uh, from that? I mean, how long does one actually um, get well enough mentally or? Uh, I see. How long does a suicide ideation last? And then um, what's the recovery rate? rate? Again, that's individual based. Um, I'm trying to think of a statistic because I don't want to go off of opinion, but I think I read somewhere that. Um, the after somebody gets help, 
and they they truly are getting the help that they need the suicide um uh suicide they're not now i can't even like if somebody has suicide ideation in one moment of time it does not mean that they are going to continue to have site suicide ideation um yeah at the same time some folks if they've had an attempt so ideation is just thinking about it an attempt is actually um taking action um attempting when someone has had an attempt unfortunately they're more likely to um continue um, to have multiple attempts. But again, it really depends on the individual. Um, if they do have a, a mental illness, then um, it needs to be treated. But it's not just the mental illness, it's the environment too. Um, if somebody is in crises and they get stabilized either by staying in a hospital and then they leave, if they're going back into a negative environment or an environment that is actually causing them to um, uh, to think about suicide or attempt, then the problem's bigger than the individual. Um, again, it's like a it's a problem. it's it's like they don't they at that point that individual needs more like nurturing and care to really figure out like what how can they be in a healthier place? Um, because suicide ideation and suicide prevention isn't about the emotional aspect or the mental aspect. It's about um, your spiritual health and your physical health. And do you have um, do you have those protective factors in your life? Do you have a stable living environment? Do you have food? Do you have um, people who um, are healthy and who can support you? Um, do you have um, do you have people who are looking out for you? Do you have people who can help you? Um, are there, are you really in a safe place? So it just depends on each individual, but I do um, encourage that all of an individual's person, uh, an individual's needs are met, um, checking in on everything that's going on in their life. Are they sleeping well? Are they eating? Are they expressing how they feel? Are is somebody helping them troubleshoot or solve like the issues in their life? Are there things that, um, what can they control in their life? And then what can, what are the things that they can't control and how can they um, move away from um, tox uh, any toxic environment that they're stuck in right now? So I'm sorry I don't have a straight answer because it really depends on the individual. Um, Again, suicide ideation is a symptom of many mental illnesses, but it is also something that folks who do not have a mental illness might result, uh, resort to. A lot of times suicide ideation is um, a symptom of depression, but it can be a symptom of schizophrenia, anxiety, um, a bipolar, um, PTSD, like any, any situation where somebody is dealing with psychological pain, um, there is a risk for suicide. Thank you, Tosha. I hope, um, Jake, I hope you reach out to Tosha um, after the interview or after the interview, after the presentation, um, and maybe you all can connect um, offline or I guess off um, Facebook Live or Zoom um, to talk about this further. I think these are really important conversations. Uh, Tosha, before, before we end, um, can you just share some of, I know there's other programming that um, your organization does with like, uh, equine therapy and other types of resources that people can access? Yes. So um, what's great about uh, our uh, community behavioral health um, department is that we don't only just talk about suicide prevention or um, give advice, but we have to have resources. So 
If you're here in the Rapid City area, we, um, through our Great Plains Tribal um, Opioid Response Program, we have um, healing with horses. So twice a month, um, actually in Rapid Valley, uh, we partner with Red Horse Healing. And so these are free um, events open to the community and you get to um, hang around with horses who are also, um, who are, uh, in themselves survivors of trauma. So you get to learn how to relate to them, how to develop communication skills and do trauma work. Um, just hanging out with the horses. Those are on typically on a Saturday from 10 to 2. And our schedule is on the Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board Facebook page. Um, for anyone out there, we have uh, virtual yoga. Um, virtual yoga, uh, well, yoga in itself is a, um, has so many benefits, but um, it makes your body feel good. It's an alternative to, uh, it's an alternative pain management. Um, you can release those kinks out of your body and then you just like leave it feeling good. So that's another protective, um, protective um, factor that you can incorporate into your life or share with a relative. So we have yoga three times a week um, through Zoom. And again, we have a, a nice link on our Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board Facebook page where you can access um, those sessions. Um, and we will continue to have events in the community um, here in Rapid. Um, and we continue to have events out in um, Fort Townsend. Um, if there's anything that we can do to support you or your ideas for um, activities, or if you just want to learn more about what we're doing here in Rapid, again, feel free to email me. Feel free to follow our Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board Facebook page. Um, get on our Connecting with our Youth app. Um, we're going to have a lot more activities coming up um, and more educational resources. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tosha. It looks like Jake said he took a screenshot, so hopefully he'll be contacting you soon. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, I know this conversation isn't always easy to have, and that, um, but it is really important, right? We we need. Um, but, you know, we need both these conversations, how we talk about our mental health um, and also the resources that we we need to connect with. So um, and I, you know, I really appreciate you, Tosha, for sharing you. You've navigated these spaces both as an artist, as a community person. Um, and so especially working with the youth and um, working here in Mini Luzaha Otuwahe. So want to thank you again for joining and thank you everyone in our audience for those who tuned in on Facebook live and those who joined us in the zoom room. Thank you everyone. Thank you racing magpie. Cool. Thank you.